morning guys welcome back to uh, my workshop it's been a while <laughs> uh, happy new year merry christmas all that lot so i decided i needed a new lathe now you can see that i've got the cl3 there in the background i've had that just under a year i think it's coming up to sometime in january or february i got it uh 2020 um and i spent a lot of time on it i have learnt a lot on it from my dad obviously the other the, the senior of the boldwood turners um and i decided it was just that little bit too small you know the features just weren't enough for me now um or i just wanted to spend some money <laughs> um, either way this needs to get out of the way ready for delivery of my new lathe now, obviously, you're going to want to know what my new lathe is. And I decided to stick with record power. I've looked around a lot. Um, my original plan was to save up to get the Axminster AT406. Um, now, they are, with the legs, they're over two grand, 2,200 quid or something like that. Um, there was also the Stratos FU230, which was a Simon Hope um, lathe as well. Uh, again, decided to go elsewhere. Now, I'm at, I, I, I stuck with the record power mainly because I've enjoyed the record power as it is. You know, the quality is really good. I've enjoyed this little, this cheaper lathe. I say cheaper lathe, but it's still 700 quid when we bought it and I installed the uh, Speed Genie box, the one and a half horsepower Speed Genie box from um, Haydock Converters. You know, if you ever need to upgrade your CL3, Instead of using the VSLK unit, which is only a one horsepower unit, and it cost damn near 600 quid, um, I went for the one and a half horsepower unit with reverse, and I put an emergency stop on as well. Uh, you can see the unit there itself. You know, the unit was, well, it is fantastic. Works an absolute dream. You get that extra half horsepower, and it cost me in total 550 pounds. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I decided to go with Record Power's Coronet uh, Envoy. Um, now, I, that it comes to around 15, 1600 quid, something like that. And I bought mine from Yandel's. Um, so hopefully that'll be here in the next few days. It's got the 16 inch swing that I wanted. It's got a two horsepower motor. Um, it's got self ejecting tailstock. It's full cast iron bed. Uh, cast iron legs. So yeah, once that comes, we'll have a look at it and we'll build it and we'll have our first go on it. This lathe, the CL3, is actually going to go into um, Senior's shop, uh, my dad's shop, Christopher Parker. Um, now it's going to go in there, it's still my lathe, um, he's not pulled off me, unfortunately, um, but uh, I'm going to let him use it for um, extra tuition, basically. So we're going to break this down and we're going to get this down to my dad's workshop. See the lathe. 
Mm -hmm. Like I've said before in other videos, I have got a really small workshop. It's about four foot wide uh, by about ten foot long, something like that. Um, well, no, it's probably more than ten foot, probably about fifteen, twenty foot. Um, but yeah, it is quite a small workshop. So this one is the Record Coronet Envoy. So you have gained a little bit of extra foot space, which for when I'm doing hollowing will be perfect. Start on the headstock first, eh? So you can see that. Coronet Envoy. Nice chunky headstock. It's nice, it's a nice compact um, design. Quite nice and curvy. So obviously you can see it's come with a three inch uh, face plate, a four prong drive, um, it's got a nice spindle lock there that works really well in there and absolutely no movement at all in the headstock. You can see the three spindles, two and three, and you can see on there the information they give you for each pulley as well, the speeds that you get uh, for each pulley. Obviously the lower, the smaller pulley being for higher torque and obviously the one with more, the bigger pulley being for more high speed stuff. And I'm going to leave it on the middle one, um, or obviously use that one if I'm doing any big stuff, which I should be doing a few bigger things nowadays. Um, so it's got a little magnet there that shuts it, keeps it nice and locked. And there's also this here that stops it from uh, being turned on accidentally while that's open. Um, and there's a little window there, which to be honest is a bit useless for where it is. Um, you can't actually see it without looking right over the headstock. Um, it would have been nicer to have a window up here uh, for the indexing system so you can actually see through. That would be a little bit more helpful. So it's a two horsepower motor, 1.5 kilowatt. And you can see there, the magnetic box. Now I'd seen a few people comment that it, the magnets weren't very strong and that they could knock it if they go and turn it off and turn it on. But, you know, it's, it's they're quite hefty, I would say, personally. But that's a really useful little piece of kit anyway. Obviously, you've got forward, nothing, and reverse. And that's your speed low to high. Uh, so, obviously, the come with it was in the package that I had bought from Yandels is a magnetic LED light, which I'm looking forward to getting out and seeing how well it works. And it also comes with a tool shelf for the coronet and envoy laves, the envoy and regent laves, sorry. Uh, now I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to use it or not because I have got my uh, dust uh, extractor and air compressor underneath this lathe, just like I did on the other one, again, because of uh, compact space. So I don't know what I'll do with this shelf. Okay, I'll take it out of the package. I might be able to put it somewhere else. Um, but yeah, I think it normally goes on there somewhere, but I'm not sure. So we'll have a look and then we'll decide on what to do. And move on to the bed. It's really nicely machined. Obviously it came with a lot of uh, shipping grease on it, uh, but nicely cleaned off. And I'll give it a quick wax as well, just to make sure these slide just that little bit more freely, because they're not quite free yet. So 140 kilo, I think, with the headstock, the tailstock, everything on it. Um, but yeah, it's a nice hefty lathe. Uh, see it's a nice long banjo as well. Um, obviously, we do I think the capacity of this is 16 inch, so it gives you that full capacity there. Um, it's really nice as well. Um, much, much more easy to lock in. Uh, move on to the tailstock now. It's a little bit smaller than I thought it was going to be. Um, but it's a nice piece of kit. Again, it's curvy, it's nice, it's, it, it'll do the job. Comes with a uh, ring centre, ring pointed centre, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> um, one of the big improvements with this compared to the CO3 is the hand wheel. Now, the, other, the, hand, the, the hand wheel for the quill, um, the one on the CO3, when we got it, was a little bit stiff as it was. Once we'd grease it up a little bit more, it was okay, but it was quite small. So you're doing that for a long, you're doing that for a long time, um, and it it just wasn't as free as you'd like it to be. And as much as the quill was 100 mil, 
hundred millimeters long, it only ever went up to sixty millimeters. You can see the nice smooth movement of that. You know. And if I wanted to, I can just swing it like that and it moves so nice and free. Which, like I said, compared to the CL3 is completely different. And you see now I'm it says it, has, it gets a 90 like a 90 millimeter long quill, which is exactly what I'm getting. Even in fact, a little bit more, and it is solid. It's solid, machined very well. Oh yeah, let me see. Works really well for getting it right out of the way. Again, with the uh, cam lock that's on it, that sweet moves really nice and easy. Much easier to get on and off as well, which for me, when I'm doing hollowing, is a necessity. So overall, that's the record coronet uh, envoy. Um, I'm going to do just a small amount of turning, just to give it a quick go in a bit. But first things first, we'll get the light and tool shelf unpacked. Right, so now we'll just take a look at the... Uh, a tool shelf like I said I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this but we'll get it out and have a look at the quality of it because well why not quite thick I'd say that's about three or four mil steel pretty well made that to be fair yeah so it just attaches to that there and I think maybe if I move my extractor the actual extractor unit to just here might have to move the label over a couple of inches but if that fits there I'll be able to then get the tool shelf underneath and at least it'll be useful. It's always nice to have uh, a bit of extra space to put tools, isn't it? So I might switch over to a uh, time lapse and get that done. So you can see now that I've got the tool shelf on. It was a bit of a pain to put on. It would have been nice in the instructions originally if it said, if you've got the tool shelf, don't put the uh, top on until you've got the tool shelf on. 
Uh, figured out a way around it though. Um, luckily I had help. Uh, I've got the light set up now. Still not decided whether I'm going to use it with battery power or not. It does, with the wire, it does create a bit of an issue of where it is. Um, of it not getting in the way down here of anything spinning. Uh, but at least up there for now, it should work and we'll see how powerful it is. I mean, that obviously lights up the layer extremely well. And it's better than my old light. So, and it's much more manoeuvrable as to wherever I want it to be. And like I said before, for when doing hollow, you can do that with it. Or just give it floodlights so it floods the hole. So I think I'm just going to put a piece of this ash on. Um, it's soaking wet. It'll be down about four or four, five months ago sometime, just for August. Well, we picked it up in August in Scotland from Johnny um, at Fife Woodturner on Instagram. Um, really nice piece of olive ash. So I think I'll just put it on, get it round, um, and yeah, we'll... Uh, We'll see how the lathe does on its first go. Right, so I'm only going to be rough turning. Um, I'm going to want to get rid of that. So that's So I've already made sure that the centres line up perfectly, which is not that far out one anyway, because the, the way that the cam lock is set up is quite easy. Uh, obviously just done a kiss test. Um, if any of you don't know what that is, then just have a quick look on it. Uh, YouTube, I'm sure you'll find it on there. Nice here, not very used. That's nearly max on my old lathe, I would say. Well, it's not far off, it's just under 9 in. But I think with the banjo, I never used to be able to get it underneath. Um, or at least it wouldn't be very much, so if it was slightly off, or if I got it wrong putting it on the faceplate, then I'd have to take a little bit off one end. But it's just nice having that bit of freedom. So, I'm bringing the tail stop up just for a bit of extra support, because nice 12 inch tool rest there. We'll start with the uh, 3 8 pole gouge uh, M42 crown. So, put it on down there, so we've got some power, make sure it's on low. With that digital speed, uh, the, uh, the lowest speed I have on the middle pulley is 470, which for a piece like this is absolutely fine.
Right, so uh, as you can see, you're finished now. Um, so the first thoughts on this is cracking little machine. Um, well, I said little, it's uh, it's a decent machine. It, the power is absolute. I mean, obviously, I only did a small bowl there. Just want to do a quick little test run. Um, I've, as you've probably seen throughout today, I've got a bunch of uh, other bits of this that needs to be roughed down. Um, you know, no issues at all, no stalling out. Um, you know, it reduced the wobble in a very wet piece of olive ash as well. Obviously, the olive, olive ash, uh, the olive wood being much denser than the sap wood, it creates quite a lot of wobble, which it did on my other lathe on the CL3. Um, so obviously, it really dampened that, which that comes with one the weight and two the cast iron the build of it it's, it's fantastic um so yeah i'm really quite happy and i'm looking forward to doing another three month maybe six month video review of how it's been doing over a long uh, over a decent period of time over a decent amount of use as well um so obviously this piece will now will just go into the shavings that it came out of uh, for a couple of days, let it just slow down the process of drying. Then I'll slap some uh, PVA on it, get it weighed, get the moisture checked, and then that'll be another six to eight months or so before it even gets looked at again. But yeah, thanks very much for watching. Um, make sure you like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.